Hi everybody, welcome back to Synthetic Biology 1. Today, I'll show you how to make and load an agarose gel. As you'll see, an agarose gel is basically just a big old block of jello. Because DNA has a strong negative charge, we can use an electric field to pull DNA through this big block of jello. The agarose fibers form a tight, tangled meshwork that the DNA can only move through very slowly. Small DNA fragments move faster and large DNA fragments move more slowly. This allows us to separate pieces of DNA according to their size. And as you'll see, this is useful when we want to visualize DNA, for example, to see exactly how large our piece of DNA is, or when we want to separate and purify fragments of DNA from a mixed population of fragments. Okay, let's get started. The first thing we need for our agarose gel is agarose. So let's take a moment to make sure we've got the right stuff. All right, so this looks good. It says agarose on it. Importantly, it is not agar, right? So we've used agar in other protocols to prepare Petri dishes, uh, and that is different stuff. It won't work for an agarose gel. Agarose is much more refined, uh, much higher purity, and much more expensive, okay? So don't make the mistake of using agar in your agarose gel. We're also not looking for low melting point agarose. Right? So depending on the lab where you're working, uh, people may be using low melting point agarose. That's for other applications. Uh, that won't work uh, for these gels either. Right? So we only want exactly agarose, except no substitutes. Now, this bottle is labeled in German, which I do not read, but I'm pretty sure it's the right stuff. Ours will be a 1% agarose gel. That means we're dissolving half a gram of agarose in 50 milliliters of buffer. So I'll measure out my, my half a gram of agarose. One tip here is because it tends to be easier to measure liquids than to measure powders, uh, I measure the powder first and then I adjust the volume of liquid to correspond. So for example, here I've got uh, 0.6 grams rather than 0.5. And so that just means I'll increase my volume uh, from 50 mils to 60 mils. I'll have a little bit left over at the end, but uh, for me it's, it's just a bit easier overall. To this I add 60 mils of TBE buffer. So we make our agarose gels not in water, but in TBE buffer, which does a few important things. So first the T stands for tris, the B stands for boric acid. Together those uh, are a pH buffer, so that keeps our gel pH near neutral and therefore protects our DNA. The EDTA is a metal ion chelator that inactivates DNases, so it's also there to stabilize the DNA. Uh, and finally, the, the buffer provides electrolytes. So when we're all done with this, we're going to run an electrical current through this gel, and that we need electrolytes to carry that current. So that's, that's what the buffer is doing. Uh, you may find TAE in your lab, so that's, a, that's a, another common buffer. Uh, it works just as well. Uh, it does all the same things, but importantly, you can't mix the two buffers. So if you've got TAE and TBE, or maybe you're using another buffer, uh, you've got to be consistent through the, whole, through the whole protocol, otherwise things won't work. Right, now to dissolve this agarose and form the matrix, I'm going to microwave this solution for about a minute. So here we are after 30 seconds, so you can see that the agarose is starting to dissolve, but we can still see particles of, of agarose sticking to the sides, and uh, the solution is not completely clear, so there's a lot of little grains of agarose in there, uh, and it's a little bit cloudy, so this is not yet ready.
Okay, here we are. It's been a little bit more than a minute and I think we are good to go. So as you can see, the solution has turned perfectly clear. Uh, there's no visible grains of agarose. In order to achieve this, you really want to watch the microwave and uh, achieve a kind of a rolling boil of the solution for 10 or 15 seconds to get completely dissolved uh, agarose. And it takes about a minute or a minute and a half. Okay, so this is a bit too hot to work with right now, so I'm going to set this aside to cool. And while it's cooling, I'm going to prepare my mold for the gel. So here's an example of the molds that we use in this lab. Uh, so it's nothing but a rectangular piece of plastic that I can uh, pour the agarose into. This mold also comes with a tray, so this is going to physically hold the gel. It goes right in there. And then a comb, so the comb uh, goes on top of the mold and it creates these little wells, these little slots, where we can add our DNA to the gel itself. So that goes here on top. And that's it. That's ready to pour. Uh, so your lab m might not have a mold that looks exactly like this, so I, I brought some examples of some other molds uh, that you might see just so you can uh, be familiar. So this is another style of, of uh, gel mold. It's, it's basically the same idea. So, so here I've got the tray, and then there's these little rubber doohickeys around the side that fit perfectly into this kind of plastic frame. Okay. So you can you produce your, uh, your mold that way. And then I've also got this big sort of monster gel thing, uh, which I'm showing just as an example. So if your mold setup uh, doesn't include a, like a, a proper tray, uh, you may find that you have to use tape to actually seal off the edges of the mold. So I'll show you how to do that now. Get a big old piece of tape. Hopefully your, uh, your gel won't be this big. This thing is ridiculous. So I'm going to put it right on the edge of the mold, forming a kind of dam. Press down with my finger to get a good seal of the tape against the, uh, against the plastic. And now this is very important. You've got to leave a little edge of tape wrapped around the bottom of the mold that you can fold under and seal, right? Like, uh, like you're wrapping a birthday present, right? So you really need that edge of tape wrapping underneath the mold. Otherwise, the hot agarose is just going to leak out uh, uh, and go everywhere, and, and it's the worst. Okay, so if you, if you have that kind of setup, uh, be very careful about how you apply your tape. All right, but we don't have that kind of setup. We have this kind of setup. While I've been talking, the agarose has cooled. And now there is one more thing I want to add before uh, I'm ready to pour my gel. And that is the, uh, the DNA stain. For this, uh, we're using a DNA stain called CyberSafe. So this is a, uh, uh, an, inter an intercoolant of the DNA molecules. So this this dye will bind in between the base pairs of DNA and then fluoresce, right? So it helps us to visualize the DNA. So all DNA intercoolants are potentially dangerous, right? Anything that binds to DNA can cause mutations and therefore give you cancer. This particular dye has been modified so that it can't penetrate uh, your cells, right? And so therefore uh, it's, it's much safer. Uh, but in principle, it still might be dangerous, so we, we handle it very carefully. And depending on where you live, there may be important regulations about uh, how you handle it and how you dispose of it. Another popular dye, a kind of an old school dye that people use, is called ethidium bromide. And in many labs, ethidium bromide is the most dangerous thing in the lab. Uh, you have to be extremely careful about how you handle ethidium bromide. So if you're using ethidium bromide um, as, as your stain, make sure you talk to a professional in your lab about how to handle it safely and how to dispose of it safely. Okay. So for this uh, 50 mil gel or 60 mil gel, I'm going to use uh, six microliters of this DNA stain. It's at a very high concentration.
It has this, uh, this very bright orange color. And then when we add it to our, our agarose, it's going to turn the agarose visibly orange, just a little bit. Okay, now we're ready to pour. So what we're looking to do here is, first of all, we want to make sure that the gel tray is flush against the, the bottom of this kind of uh, gel frame so that we don't get agarose underneath the tray. And then we want to pour until we reach just almost to the top of the combs, right? So we want a nice full well, but we don't want to overflow the, the tray. So I'll just pour in here very carefully. until we fill the tray just to the top. And if you happen to get any bubbles in your tray, you can uh, take them out or just push them to the side uh, with a pipette tip like this. <clears throat> After the gel is poured, it will take about 30 minutes at room temperature for the gel to cool, for the matrix to be formed and create a, a gel that we are ready to, to load and use.